What is going on, everybody? This is Justin Martinez, a.k.a. Jada Sports Dude, coming to y'all live from my apartment. Hopefully you all are staying at your homes as well, practicing social distancing and staying safe during this pandemic. And I'm here to provide y'all with a little bit of extra entertainment. That's right, folks. It is time for episode number 19 of Stray Shooter, the offseason web series. It's all over the place as we talk about a little bit of everything. The players from New Mexico State. Joining me today is a guy who's ready to make his debut for the Aggies this season. He's a rim rocking, show stopping big man from Chicago, but there's no bull to his game. Rashawn Aji, welcome to the show, my man. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Happy to have you on the show. Just how are you liking practice so far, man? How are things going with the team? I feel like things are going great, to be honest. I feel like the only thing is missing right now is just the chemistry. Chemistry is more out of the we just getting used to playing with each other. We got a lot of transfers coming in. Yeah, for sure. But definitely a process, right? Yes, sir. Awesome. Well, we are happy to have you on the show. Like I said, we're going to get started with segment number one. This is called the Film Room. So I take a couple of your best plays from your high school days back in Chicago since you did redshirt last season here in New Mexico mm -hmm. State. You're just going to help break them down for the people. How does that sound? Okay. Sounds awesome. good. Cool, cool. Now, one of the things I really like about your game when looking at the film is your lob catching abilities, that unspoken timing with your teammate is part of the reason why he averaged 20.3 points per game as a senior two seasons ago. We got to see one of those throwdowns here in a game against DePaul. Let's go ahead and check it out. There it is, throwing it down with authority. Now this is your teammate. Um, I believe his name is Darian Jones getting the blow by, and that allows your defender to move up, which gets you the open look at the rim. Just what goes in to having the chemistry with your teammates on the court like this? Because it wasn't just Darian who's throwing down these, these lobs to you. Pretty much everybody on your team threw into you at some point this past season. I mean, uh, it was just more so me just, like, practice, like, being more authoritative in practice and taking practice like it was a game. And not really like being a walkthrough person in practice. I feel like being practice, being more vocal and talking to them, and being open arms to everything they had to say, it helped me with my chemistry with them. Yeah, for sure. Now you have a couple guys on this New Mexico State team who definitely have that speed to blow past their defenders and create some opportunities for you. Guys like Evan Gilliard, guys like Jabari Rice, CJ Roberts, the list goes on and on. Just how much are you looking forward? to creating that chemistry with them and maybe catching a few lobs from them. Yeah, I definitely am, especially with uh, C.J. Roberts and Barry and Evan, them right there. I feel like it's key parts of, like, them just getting past and being able to give it to me is always an option. For sure. Now, it's not just powerful throwdowns with you. You also have really good touch around the rim, and there's a really good example here on this video against East St. Louis. Let's go ahead and check it out. finish there that is a super impressive because you're running that fast break and you're meeting a pretty good rim protector here down low this guy's name is richard robinson and he's actually at the juco level right now averaging about a block and a half per game so definitely someone who can get those rejections we do a really good job of putting your back to him to create that space and then mm -hmm. that nice touch around the rim like i said despite being fouled knocking it down just walk me through this play as you get this ball out around the three-point line and start rolling towards the basket um, obviously, like, I'm not really always the man to get the ball in the fast break. I'm normally, like, you know, the trail guy or looking for the pass. So, it's like, I just try to create a move just to get the contact and finish. Yeah, definitely. How much does it really open a big man's game when they are able to run that fast break, though? Does it just make everything, like, so much easier for you, pretty much? Yeah, I feel like everything is very much easier on everybody's part, especially point guards. When they're able to outlet it to me, and we start to break fast than normal. Yeah, for sure. Another thing I really like is how relentless you are on the boards. You're actually averaging 14.7 rebounds per game as a senior, and we got to see one of those second chances here because a lot of them were just extra effort second chances. We have to see one of that here in a game against Morgan Park. Let's go ahead and check this out. It is. 
this. Now, this is Isaiah Burrell who's guarding you. He's only standing at six foot five compared to you at six foot seven. So you have the mismatch here, and I think that's why you're getting a little bit more aggressive on this one, right? Yeah, uh, really. Well, having that game, like uh, going into the game, it was just very uh, like intense and energy atmosphere, and I feel like I just need to be more early in order for my team to like, you know, be positive during the remainder of the game. But really, like just rebounding. Period. So like, it's it's a lost art of the game. Like some people really feel like they don't need to crash as hard as they should. And I feel like to be 100%, like, you don't have to have the ball in your hand 100% of the time just to get a bucket. Most of the, I feel like most, like, 50% of basketball buckets come off for offensive rebound. Yeah, for sure. Now, also, even though you're only standing at six foot seven, you're not always going to be the tallest guy on the court. I think that New Mexico State, especially, isn't really the type of team traditionally with Coach Jans that's going to rely on, like, a really, really big center there's a lot of guys like Johnny McCants at around your height, Donnie Tillman, Wilfred Lakai. Just how much do you think you're going to fit in well with this system where it's not necessarily height. It's going to be a lot of guys who are able to play maybe that four or five spot, a lot of versatility, right? Yeah, uh, I, feel, I feel like I feel in, fit in great. I just feel like uh, I just need to add more like, versatile, versatility to my game in order to become more of a outstanding player and become a better player on and off the court. Definitely. Uh, your mobility on the defensive side of the ball is another thing that I want to highlight here in this next play. It's coming in a game against Curie. Let's go ahead and check this out. There it is. It's a pretty short clip there. But you get the gist, the emphatic block here on a guy going by the name of Justin Harmon going up for the layup. You got to go up stronger when they're going up against you. Am I right? Yeah, for sure. I always like to uh, get blocked because I feel like blocks and dunks are just like the energy given to, to the team and gets everything just like going. Yeah, for sure. And this isn't just you camping out of the paint. This is you getting that chase down LeBron style block. Just how much do you pride yourself in not being one of those guys who's just standing underneath the basket? Like, do you pride yourself in being one of those guys that can move around on defense? Yes, I, I would like to be able to go one through five with no problems. Mm -hmm. One thing I'm striving for it and becoming to, to become a better defender. Yeah, for sure. Now we're going on to our next segment here. This is where I like to find a throwback photo or video of the guy that I'm talking to, Rashad. I promise it's nothing bad, but I did some <laughs> digging and I got some here and I want to get your reaction to. How's that sound? Okay. All right, cool. So now this is going back to, I believe this is 2018. It's not too far back, okay. but still a pretty cool photo nonetheless. This is you taking a picture with another Chicago native oh. <laughs> an NBA player who plays for the Houston Rockets right now. This is actually after a game against Proviso West High School, which is his alma mater. And you yeah. put up 29 points, 16 rebounds, and five blocks on his alma mater. And then had the audacity, Rashad, to ask me a photo <laughs> afterwards. Uh -oh. <laughs> me, uh, what was it like getting to to meet Robert? Was this your first time getting to meet him? Uh, it actually was my first time. It was not really a long conversation, but it was a good conversation. He just like telling me like keep working, you know, nothing's given basically, and I always got to strive for greatness. Yeah, for sure. Who are some other Chicago natives that maybe you taking some inspiration from, or they're as good as it gets? Who are some guys that really represent Chicago basketball well? I mean, I feel like everybody who who comes out of Chicago basketball represents it well. There's some people, you know, that goes down the wrong path, but you know, everybody feel I feel like everybody if they if they're able to make it out, no matter if it's basketball or any type of sport or just doing anything or doing something with their life, I feel like it's just a blessing. And I feel like they represent represent us very well because of the drive they give. Yeah, without a doubt. I'm moving on to our next segment here. This is called Hometown Heat, Rashawn, and this is where I take a couple of restaurants from your hometown, and it's going to tell mm -hmm. me if they're legit or not. How does that sound? Okay, it sounds good. All righty. Now, this one here I've heard is a very iconic place in Chicago. This is Portillo's Hot Dogs. Rashawn, is this that hometown heat or not? Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> we used to, like, uh, <laughs> my senior year, we used to, like, go there all the time. Like, me and my uh, teammates, this is, this is, this is the bonding spot. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Here's another one that I want to run past you. Uh, this place is called Lou Minotti's Pizzeria, where they got the traditional 
deep dish pizza. Is this that hometown heat, Rashawn? Uh, really? I haven't had that in a long time. I'm not really like, I would say it's not, I don't, I don't know. I give it the in between because I haven't okay. had it in a minute. Beggars is more of my style and something that like household like loves to eat. Yeah. Where's the best pizza place in Chicago then? I, I had to give it to Beggars. Seriously. Okay. Got you, got you. What are some other places in the Chicago area where if you're visiting for the first time, you're recommending? Uh, for sure, I recommend Harold's, Harold's Chicken. It's one of, one of the best places to get some meals from. It's just chicken and fries, but it's, it's very it's very good. It might be unhealthy, but it's good, though. <laughs> Can't go wrong with it. <laughs> now, moving on to our next segment here. This is our fan Q&A segment. So I reached out to Aggie Nation, and they got a couple questions that they want you to answer, if you don't mind. Oh, for sure. All righty. Let's go ahead and go back to split screen here. And I'm going to pull these questions up on my phone. All righty. Our first one is coming to us courtesy of Steven Dominguez via Twitter. He wants to know, did you and Evan Gilliard ever duke it out on the court in Chicago? And if so, which team won? Talk to me about, about Evan, another yeah. Chicago native. I think we probably played them about – three or four times. And I believe my sophomore year, my sophomore year was the year we beat them. Mm-hmm. My junior year we lost. And of course my senior year he left and we beat them in uh, overtime. Oh, okay. year, but my junior year we lost to them. We only played them once because they changed the conference around. My mm-hmm. sophomore year, they beat us at their house and then they had came to our house and we beat them. What do you remember about playing him specifically? Like, what what makes him such a good player? I mean, his, his just versatile ability in order to create for others, and he's like more of a scoring guard. He likes to get into the paint, and that's really how he's able to create for others because he's a downhill guard. Yeah, definitely. And I would say just looking forward to getting to play with him now. It's a lot better than getting to play against him, right? Yeah, very. Definitely. Yeah, that's the other team's problem to figure out how to defend them now, right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Definitely. Moving on to our next question here. This one is coming to us courtesy of Aggie Grad via Aguilar. He wants to know, in the past you've mentioned the importance of moving down from the five to a forward position and developing those skills. How is that coming along so far? Uh, to be honest, it's, it's coming along very, very good right now. I'm actually going to play the four more this year than the five. More so because I feel like I'm a little undersized and I feel like I have a little more versatility with trying to play the four and five because, you know, five men now is just more of a seven footer and like at least like six, nine, six, ten. And me being standing at six, seven, six, six, uh, I believe like the four man, I get more competition with. Even though I can play the five man, I'm not, I don't have no problem with guarding anybody bigger than me at all. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it's an advantage for me on, on the offense end. Yeah, definitely. Now you've had some really good guys to learn from. Yvonne Adeko Echea, who just graduated, Johnny McCants, who is returning all around your same height. Just what have you learned from some of them? Uh, really, I learned from Yvonne the most was how aggressive he was on the boards and how he was just being relentless and he always like fought for everything. And Johnny, I, I really noticed how Johnny, is, his patience, his patience is, is outstanding on the court and he just like, he has the knack to like you know go for all the loose ball, and he's always the energy giver, like taking charge. Yeah, definitely. I know, especially at that power forward spot, being able to stretch the floor is really important. Johnny being one of those guys who does it as well as anyone in the conference. Just how mm-hmm. are you feeling about your three point shot? Is that something you're looking to improve even more? Or just how are you feeling about it? I feel very confident in my jump shot. Uh, something I worked on since I've been in high school. I might not take it a lot just because. I just feel like I'm more of a to the basket type of player, but if you give it to me, I feel like I right, I can definitely knock it down. Yeah, and I mean that's really all it takes, right? It's just forcing the defense to respect it. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And moving yeah. on to our last question here, um, let me go ahead and pull this one up. This one is coming to us courtesy of 97 NMSU via Aguilar. He wants to know Chicago Hoopsters have had great success here at NMSU, and fans here are anxiously awaiting to see you hit the court. What can they expect? How would you describe your game? Uh, I describe my game and I feel like my game has totally changed from high school to now because in high school, I just feel like I needed to be more of a 
a like energy giver, and that never changes. But like more of an energy giver, like on the court because I was on the court ninety five percent of the time. But now because you know we have returners and it's the uh, of being in, like you have to gain trust from your coaches and your teammates. So now it's just like me being more vocal, me opening my mouth more, even if I'm on, a, even if I'm off the court. So even if I'm on the bench, I'm still talking. I'm telling them where to go, who behind them, this and the third. I'm always trying to be vocal now. Yeah, definitely. You mentioned your game changing since your high school days. I'd imagine it would have been a tougher, tougher transition had you gone straight from high school to playing last season. But how much did getting to sit out this past year just really help you kind of learn the way of, of Division One basketball? Uh, it incredibly helped me. Last year, I feel like the game was moving a little faster than normal. So I'm like – Incredibly, like this year, the game is moving much slower. I understand it more. I understand the spots I need to be in. And I understand what the coaching staff wants from me. Yeah, definitely. Rashawn, I think that's all that we have for this one. If you guys want to follow this guy on Twitter, go ahead and do that. AG Rashawn. You can also follow me on Twitter at Jay the Sports Dude. Thanks so much for being on the show, man. Before we get out of here, is there anybody you want to shout out? Anything that you want to plug? Man, I just want to thank, you know, my family my father, my mother, just for being able to put me in this position. Definitely. Well, Aggie Nation is looking forward to having you out here on the court this upcoming season and watching you play, man. Thanks again so much for being on the show. Thank you.